So we're gonna do a basic game here. I don't often do a lot of tier four stuff, but we'll 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 do a back to basics kind of gig, because we've got a person that is straight up new. Let's see, do we even have camo on this thing? Uh, we do. We just have the basic whatever. All right. So for the equipment, you just start out with the whatever. Having the better hull just usually means you turn a little faster. It really doesn't matter. The Langley is very slow. As far as the upgrades, you just pick the one that looks like a plane. <laughs> so keep it simple. To know about the CV, the CV has automatic automated consumables. If you get spotted, a little defensive fighter will orbit your ship for up to 10 minutes. You have four of those. So other CVs coming to attack you, your little defensive fighter is going to shoot down stuff if they come at you. So usually CVs will focus on the, uh, the your teammates other than you because you'll always be protected by a fighter until four of these have been used up. Your damage con is automatically triggered if you get lit on fighter. It lasts a minute, uh, but once it's down, it's down for a minute and a half. And you don't control this, so if somebody hits a fire on you, they know when your damage con is down to come back. For the commander build, I have just nine point commander here. More, faster, healthier. This makes your planes regen a little faster, so you, you get more planes a little, a little sooner. Uh, you have a little faster speedy planes because I'm going to tell you the tier 4 planes are slow. Um, tier 4 is not designed to do crazy amounts of damage and make pro plays and do all sorts of fantastic whatever. It's, it's to learn, really. And uh, survivability expert gives your planes more health and airplane armor makes them more resistant to AA. Eventually, if you get a 13-point captain, you can get a concealment expert to try to make you a little more sneaky and then worry about getting the other points later, depending on what line you're in. So this right here, more, faster, healthier, is a good way to start. So in Tier 4, there's very little flak. That's something you start to see at Tier 6. There really aren't fighters. That's something that you start to see at Tier 6. Tier 4 is designed to just kind of keep it simple, allow a new player to enter into the situation and try to learn how to go to the things that they want to attack and then attack the things. Um, the most important stuff that's going to happen is the little uh, white circle that's on the, the water. That's the reticle. When you start your attack by clicking the left click, you're going to have a little warm-up period of maybe two to three seconds where you you're preparing your attack and you can't fire yet. And then you go into the green and then you can shoot while it's green. You want to try to pick a good line of attack, kind of like if you're in a surface ship, you shoot ahead of where your ship is going, right? The ship is sailing this way so you don't shoot at it because by the time your shells get there, he's already left. So you shoot ahead of him. Well, it's kind of the same thing with the, with the planes. You put the reticle ahead of where the ship is going and you meet him in the middle. It just happens that you're closer, so if the reticle is right on that ship, you're going to meet in the middle. It's a very accurate shot. Um, I guess we have to wait a while because bots or something. Um, so I'll show you each of the planes. Uh, rocket planes are good for really maneuverable stuff, although they're best when they sh you shoot at a broadside because that's the way that the rockets shoot. Um, torps are going to be the same. You want to go for a broadside. And then bombs, you usually come in from the front or the back of the ship to try to bomb along the length of it. All right, so it's like a tier four, tier five thing. AA at this tier is really low, and it's done that way to let you try to learn. So sometimes in surface ships, they'll be like, my AA doesn't do anything. This really sucks. Why won't you fix this? It's because tier four is the learning, the first thing, you know, baby's first carrier. <laughs> So I like to start with the rocket planes. Rocket planes are pretty quick, I mean comparatively. And right here you see the boost bar. So when I hold forward, I speed up. If I hold backward, we can watch our speed, we slow down. So A and D, speed up, slow down. You only have a limited amount of boost and it regens. So basically if you have five seconds of boost, it takes twice that to regen. So five seconds up, or five seconds going down, 10 seconds going up. For rocket planes, if you're just trying to go somewhere, just use all the boost and then let it come back. When you get about halfway across the map, 
is when you're going to want to stop just, you know, let back, let it go, let your boost hold up, try to find what you're going to attack. Because boost is going to help you speed up and slow down to try to make sure that your attack is going to be as good as it can be. So we don't have a fight or anything, there's nothing we can do here. Let's, let's shoot the Phoenix. I think the Phoenix has good AA. So this reticle is going to help us. We're going to put the reticle in front of where we think the Phoenix is going to go. Although he's turning pretty hard, so <clears throat> maybe it's not going to be a good time to attack him. <clears throat> Well, he stopped turning in, so maybe we can make this work. We're going to put the reticle where we think he'll be. So we're going to put it a little ahead of him. We're going to start our attack. Now let's slow down because he's not moving quickly enough. And we'll shoot when he's in the reticle. So our rockets hit. We were able to turn a little to try to meet him because he, he juked us. And the US line, you can turn some. So it allows you to do that, which allows you to make those mistakes. So we're going to pick a line, looks like we, we were going way too far ahead, so we adjust, slow down, and we shoot while he's in the reticle and get another chunk of damage. That's going to be the rockets. <clears throat> Not tier 4 clubbing. Uh, I'm, I'm describing this to somebody who's never played a CV before and I think would like to try and ask which, you know, what thing to try. Alright, so we use the rockets. We tried, we learned how do we place the reticle ahead of the ship, and the US you can actually turn, you know, they can move a little left, move a little right, to try to help your aim. There are other, other nations do not allow you to do that in some cases, so that's one of the reasons why I say to start with the, uh, the US line. Now for the torpedo planes, same thing, we've got a little reticle. What does this mean? Well, this means right here, that if we start our attack and don't do anything, that's where the reticle was, that's where the reticle was, that's where the reticle was. This is about where we get aimed. So this is something we can use when we're trying to attack something. So let's attack the Koenig. You can see that the Koenig is going forward. He's pointing his bow toward the enemy battleships to keep himself safe. So he's probably not going to turn. So again, we have to try to lead him. So I'm going to start to accelerate as we come in on this, because we can go through the AA a little faster. And we put our reticle here, which is in front of him. He's moving forward, we're coming in, we're going to drop maybe there, and we'll see how that does. Well, it turns out that was a pretty good drop. We struck him right in the middle, which is good. And both our planes are starting to get hurt by the AA from two battleships, which is significant. Let's go for maybe the uh, the Valenki. We put our reticle there. We're pushing forward. It's starting to firm up. We're almost down to our last two planes. And we drop. Now he's power sliding in, so he might actually get so close that this doesn't arm. But it did arm. We got two strikes, and he is down. The yellow area is the time that it takes the torps to arm. So you can't drop too close. Otherwise, the torps won't do any damage. They just go away. All right, so let's look at the bombs and something else that I'd like to tell you. So right now we don't move very fast. We're moving at 100, 101 knots. So here's something I call cruise control. We're going to hold A and we're going to speed up to the maximum speed, Good show. which is 137 and we're going to slow and we're going to let go. And after a little bit, we're going to speed up to the maximum speed and then we're going to let go. This is going to allow us to go much faster than 100 knots. We're going to go almost like 130 knots, kind of on average. So we cross the map a lot faster, but we save our boost so that we can use it when we're coming in to attack things. Now you'll notice there that I started my attack and then I moved the reticle onto the ship. The US bombers are very maneuverable. It's a special thing that these, that these, bomb, uh, that these planes get. So I'm going to maybe leave my reticle over here and then drag it onto him so that we can meet in the middle. This is more of an advanced concept. You don't have to worry about this. This is just something that you can learn over time and will make your strikes a little better than otherwise. But the big things to remember here is that you have a reticle and you need to put the reticle where the ship is going to be. She's going. We're going to meet here in the middle and we could bomb from there. If you're approaching from behind, which we can do. 
Autopilot mode enabled. Okay, so there's a DD that's gonna go after our Koenig there. We're not gonna do a lot of damage to him because tier 4 carriers really don't do a lot of damage. But we can try to help him. So we're gonna send the rocket planes because those are good at striking things that are very maneuverable. And we'll try to shoot the, uh, the DD a little, but he's probably gonna die. So... And he's dead. But, we can try to help and at least keep this guy spotted so that he doesn't come over and kill us or kill our friends. And pretty soon he's gonna appear. There he is, so... We'll put the reticle in front of him and I'm trying to hold back. I want to slow down as much as possible so that I don't go farther than him. And then I saw that he was sliding across the water and I wanted to try to predict that. So I put the reticle a little past him so that when he slid into it, he'd actually get hit by the rockets. The more you get used to this, you will, uh, you'll be able to figure out where to put it. Now you'll notice here we're turning and the reticle gets worse. That was actually a pretty nice strike. So turning is not something you want to do. You want to pick a good line and stay on it. And you get penalized if you turn or you move or you do this or that. You want to actually like get into the mind of the other player and figure out where are you going and be able to follow up and take him out. So we're going to stay on that destroyer because destroyers have torps and torps are scary. See if we can find him again. We want to let our boost speed up because we're not going to see him until we're really close. And there we go. So we can just slow down and let our reticle get small. Maybe speed up here because he's running away. And now we get the kill. So having our boost allowed us to slow down. It allowed us to speed up, which allowed us to make a good shot. So having your boost is good. You don't want to just use this all so that you can get somewhere. Uh, it's a good habit to learn for cruise control. Go to max and let it coast. Go to max and let it coast. You'll learn the rhythm. It's different for all ships. But it's very important that you try to make sure that you have boost so that you can make good attack runs. And you do have this consumable called engine cooling. You get two of them for two for your rockets, two for your torps, two for your bombs, and you can use them. Basically, if you find yourself and you have no boost and you're like, man, I wish I had some boost, go ahead and just use it. So let's attack the Julio Caesar from behind. Well, why do we do that? Because we saw what we need to put the reticle in front of him so we meet in the middle. What do we do if we attack from behind? Well, the reticle is where we aim. That's where, after the little animation happens, it's probably where the bomber is gonna drop. So we put it in front of the ship. So that as he moves forward and we move it forward, we meet in the middle. And because he was a little angled, we only hit with one bomb, but we set a fire, which is good. Again, tier low tier AA is pretty low, so it gives us time to kind of think about things and try to work about, uh, work into our shots gonna put my reticle ahead of him again and I'm gonna try to turn so that I can get a good strike so there's a hit so these guys have a lot of health so I don't know how much we can do to that they have 26,000 the other guy has like 30 something and we've only done 42,000 over 10 minutes well nine minutes so we're not going to be able to stop this, but we can slow it down. So let's make sure we're cruise controlling. We're going to speed up to our maximum speed. And then we're going to let go. And we're going to let it fall for a little bit. And then speed up to the maximum speed. And let it fall for a bit. That way we're regenning, and then we're using some. We're regenning, and we're using some. And we're going to help our Julio Caesar. Oh, we're going to eat flak here. Destination reached. So these planes are pretty nimble. They can turn left and right pretty well. We can probably strike this guy twice, so we need to put the reticle where we're going. So a little ahead of him. And because he just took a really big hit, and we drop here, he's probably going to go down. We didn't drop where the yellow is right next to the hull. We dropped a little distance away in case he turned in or he turned away. And we don't have fighters, so we can't give him support. Uh, some players don't know that tier 4 stuff, you can't do that. And right now, we are ahead in health, but, um, but we have more ships too, so that's good. The Hermes and the Rhine are running. 
We can try to hit this Julio Caesar. We need to try to strike the broadside, so we're moving into position here. And now we're going to turn in and try to go in. I put the reticle way too far ahead of him, I feel, so we're going to turn in a little and kind of turn into the broadside, and then our, we'll make our drop. Now he's power sliding over. Our torp might not catch, but it did. It armed, so we got to strike and did some damage. So that really runs down the rockets, the torps, the bombs. We talked about reticles and reticle placement. We talked about using the engine boost correctly to help make good, good plays. We talked about making, uh, doing cruise control so that we can get across the map faster without losing all of our engine boost. We haven't used an engine boost consumable, so we can do that next. So there's a Hermes that's running with 11,000 health. Oh, and I can talk about fighters. So we can do that with the Hermes of the Rhine. So what are fighters? Fighters look like planes. They circle around and they have like a target icon on them or something. And however many fighters you see is how many planes they'll kill. If you see four little dashes, they'll shoot down one, two, three, four planes. So going against a CV that has a little defensive fighter that spins around it, um, you might want to go ahead and pre-drop, which means just send attack. Those planes will leave and now we're down to three planes here. And we'll probably see this guy's little fighter thing soon. There he is. That's his little defensive fighter. When we get close to it, it attaches to us and shoots shoots down our planes. So, uh, they you'll see a circle on the map, which is if you're in the circle and they get close to you, they'll, they will go red and then they'll charge after you and shoot down your planes and stuff. If you're going to attack a target, or a fighter that has, or sorry, if you're going to attack a CV that has a fighter, instead of using all of your planes, so like, if he has that fighter and he's got four planes, one, two, three, four, well what if his AA only kills one plane when we go in, and then we drop? Well, we've used one plane, and then we attacked with two, and then the fighter will kill the other three. But what if we instead drop our bombs, and we come in and we lose one to AA, and we drop with two, and we lose one to the fighter. That's going to help manage our resources. Because CVs can run out of planes. Some people don't know this or understand this, but it's true. At tier four, however, there's really not a lot of AA, so you're not going to take tons of damage. And you have fairly good regen rates because it's a learning tier. Mostly at this tier, it's just your damage is low. It helps. I mean, if it's two battleships fighting each other, doing a little bit of damage can put it in your team's favor. Um, and the planes are slow, so low damage and slow stuff, but every little bit helps. And, uh, yeah. So he's going into attack. Maybe he'll actually get attacked by the fighter, which he just did. So now that he got attacked by the fighter, we can turn and use our bombs which we hit one that only did 1200 damage so again not a lot of damage but you know it helps <laughs> I do more damage in a in a Langley than you do in a Lexington well whatever <laughs> all right so that's kind of an intro course um, you know our team played well they got lots of kills and stuff we helped but doing the 67,000, I don't know, we did maybe a battleship and a half. Uh, one battleship should have heals and have about 50 to 60,000 health. So the big thing is, um, you, it's, sorry. So the stuff you need to learn first is managing your engine boost, um, choosing good targets that will help your team, and making sure that your reticle is in a good place that you're going to go you're going to be able to make the reticle nice and small so that your attack is accurate and then be able to hit the target first things you need to work on are those and uh, it's always good to challenge yourself so that every time you attack you hit it might not hit with all the rockets it might not hit with all the torps it might not hit with all the bombs you just want to challenge yourself that every single time you attack you hit so at least you can do that. Um, as far as learning, I absolutely recommend learning in um, co-op 
when you just when you feel completely like wow this is super new play in co-op it's okay the bots are just going to go straight for the most part so it's predictable you'll be able to shoot them um and at, at the lower tiers, you're probably going to have a lot of players that don't really know how to play the game. So it's very possible that the bots shoot better than them and the bots kill them. And then you have to start trying to kill all the stuff that remains. 